Wala po, ma'am. Supposed to be meron, ma'am, pero may activity lang kami. Mm-hmm. After this, you have a uh, one o'clock. You have a class, no? May class pa? After one? Kapag one o'clock? Yes Wala. po, ma'am. Full, anong oras kayo matapos? Four po, ma'am. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, how, how is your weekend? Next week, you will have your... Anong meron next week? Mental health week, ma'am. Mental health break. So, hindi na naman tayo magkita. Kita yes, ma'am. Tayo. Palagi talaga tayo maano. <laughs> Maapektuhan. Okay. Hindi tayo na naman magkita, no? So, I, I, I leave it to you, Patricia Benner. I leave it to you to study. And then, I cannot upload also lessons. No, after the mental break pa. And so, today, I will just discuss uh, Sister Calista Roy and the new man. Okay, but you have to... Matapos kayo. Ay, wala mo palang pasok pagka Friday, no? Nako, delete masyado. Okay. Let me check the attendance. Can you say one word? One word lang. Of what you have remember about Patricia Benner. Okay. Mr. Tagay. Novice. Okay. Mr. Dakel. Expert, ma'am. Mr. Donaire. Competent po, ma'am. Mr. Hukong. Proficient. Proficient. Mr. Labastida. Mr. Kines. Caring, ma'am. Ano yan? Caring, ma'am. Caring relationship, ma'am. Mr. Somalino. Embodiment, ma'am. Mr. Yap. Um, Meta Paradigm, ma'am. Miss Alihado. Nursing, ma'am. Ayan. Nursing. Ayan na ang boses mo. Ulit. Nursing, po, ma'am. Okay. Miss Ang. Competencies po, ma'am. No duplication. It is mentioned already. Um, diagnostic client monitoring function po. Ms. Ariate? Consistent po, ma'am. Ms. Bagyo? Maxims po, ma'am. Ms. Bitge? Seven domains po, ma'am. Ms. Borromeo? Helping role po mo. Miss Cabal Quinto. Temporality po ma'am. Role of temporality. Miss Kakanata. Ma'am, Kakananta po. Um, perception okay. po. Okay, Miss Calios. Body po ma'am. Role of the body. Miss uh, De La Cruz. Caring relationships po ma'am. Miss Dumalag. Ma'am, si Miss Dumalag po kami sa kandos niya daw po today. Miss Edig. Edig. Miss Estolioso. The role of personal concerns po, ma'am. Miss Dantuanco. Situation po, ma'am. Miss Felbolingo. Experiences po, ma'am. Miss Dumban. Situation po, ma'am. Miss Howe. Situation po, ma'am. Miss La Cuesta. Environment po. Miss La Manilao. 
Interventions, ma'am. Lazaro. Concern po. Ano yan? Concern, ma'am. Connection and concern. Ms. Manligoy. Manligoy. Mimihos. The role of the body po, ma'am. Ms. Modesto. Pinical grass po, ma'am. Ano yan? Clinical grass po, ma'am. Miss Nardo? Helping role po, ma'am. Tapos na yan. Um, how about yung seven domains of nursing practice po? Miss Nera? Coaching, ma'am. Miss Pagaran? Miss Pagaran? Miss Plaza? Miss Remorosa? Well-being po, ma'am. Miss Rosel? Illness po, ma'am. Miss Gray? Miss Gray? Ma'am, wala pong ganyan sa amin na name. Sorry. Miss Caseda. Ano po, ma'am? Enabling condition of connection and concern po. Miss Tabay. Diseases, ma'am. Miss Bicada. Illness po. Tapos na, illness. Um, ano po? Predefined. Miss Bidoy. Well-being po, ma'am. Well-being, tapos na. I key aspects of the expert nurse practice. Miss Yonke. Give me a subtanday. Using mo na yung net mo, Miss Wong. Prevention po. Miss Yumang. Pasadena po. Pasadena College. Miss Vivian Weva. Teaching, coaching, function po. Miss Yongke. Again, Miss Yongke. Miss Yongke. Miss Edig, are you in? Miss Mandigoy? Okay, take care of God. Si Miss Dumalag, nagpabaksin? Yes po, ma'am. Yes. Second dose niya po. Ha, second dose? Di ba nagpabaksin yan bago lang? First dose yun, ma'am. Mga prelims, tas ngayon pa siya nagkapasakal ko. Hindi, oy. Anong vaccine yun? Kalapit ng, ano, Pfizer? Pfizer ang gamit? Hindi ko po siya. Sinovac siya, ma'am. Sinovac, that is about 3 months. 2.5 to 3 months. Wala pa, oh, ilang araw lang, vaccine din itong absent sa kabila. Oh, sige lang, anyway, makita mo sa card. Okay? Sige lang yung matawag. Sino ito? Manligoy. Okay. Miss Manligoy? Ma'am, excuse me pa, ma'am. Si Miss Manligoy, ma'am, kay mahina daw po net, ma'am. Oh, yan na. Admit ko na. 19, Miss Manligoy. Okay, so our topic for today. Except si Eddie. Okay. Anong nangyari kay Eddie? Nag, anong exit? Ibig sabihin, nag-drop? Ah, okay. 
Let's see. So our topic for today is about uh, Sister Calisteroy, and hopefully we'll finish with the uh, Betty Newman. I will share the PowerPoint first. Slideshow. Okay, can you see the PPT PowerPoint? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, Sister Kalisteroy, uh, the theory superposes the theory of adaptation model. No? So, yesterday was her birthday, October 14. No? She was born October 14, 1939 in Los Angeles, California. She is a nurse theorist and a professor, and she's a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, an honorary nursing society that elects team leaders annually. What do you mean by fellow? Anybody from the class? Maybe sabihin na below. Kasi you can read almost to the theories that it was mentioned that they are a fellow of the uh, universities. What do you mean by that? Anybody? Fellow means she's a member of the American Academy of Nursing Association and she contributed a lot on the uh, this uh, organization. No? So she is one of the uh, what's the this one? Consultant in the uh, um, of the American Academy of Nursing. She was also one of the uh, uh, theorists who put up the what's the this one? Yung, an organization which is called Asnanda, in which later on you will base your nursing diagnosis as you make your nursing process while you have your RLE. She has numerous publications, including books and journal articles on the nursing theory and other professional topics. So if you will have your uh, research, you can refer to some of the journals of uh, Sister Calisteroy. Okay? As the same with other theory, she has also the meta... She also mentioned the different meta paradigm. So you read for us, Miss Lazaro. Person is the recipient of recipient of nursing care. Main focus of nursing, a biophysical social being a const, being in constant interaction with a changing environment. The person is an open adaptive system who uses coping skills to deal with stress, with stressors. It includes people as individuals or in groups, families, organizations, communities, nations, and society as whole. An adaptive system has cognitor and regulator subsystems to maintain the four adaptive modes. Okay, so if you still remember who is also the other theorist who mentioned that the person is the recipient of our nursing care. Anybody? Sige daw. Recall, aside from this uh, sister Calisteroy, there was a theorist we have discussed already. No, we have uh, you have studied already, which mentioned that the, the person is also the recipient of our nursing care. Uh, Ma'am, you know, uh, the Jean Watson. Yes, it was Jane Watson who mentioned that the person is the recipient of nursing care. So it is a biopsychosocial being wherein we are in con constant contact or interaction with the environment. No? Uh, it, has, uh, it also affects our, our self if there are some changes in the environment. The person is an open adaptive system, therefore, 
she has different coping mechanisms to deal with the stressors within the uh, that can be brought about by the changing environment. Okay, it has also an adaptive system, the cognitor and regulator, and this will be discussed later as we continue with the discussion. Then you read for us, Miss Billion. Ay, Miss Billion Weva. Yes, po. Okay. Read for us, Miss Billion Weva. Okay. Po. Environment, conditions, circumstances, and influences that surround and affect the development and behavior of the person consists of internal and external environments, which provide input in the form of stimuli. Stressors are stimuli that are significant in human adaptation, stages of development, family, and culture. Okay, so the environment, this is where the person or the recipient of our care who is in constant interaction with the external as well as the internal environment. No? Then uh, it has some stressors, some stimuli that causes stress to the uh, developing individual. Okay. Okay, next we have, you read for us, Miss. Gumban. Health was originally described by Roy as a health illness continuum. Health and illness were considered an inevitable dimension of the person's life. More recently, health is the process of being and becoming an integrated and whole person. It is a reflection of adaption that is the interaction of the person and environment. Adoption is defined as the process adaptation. by adaptation. Sorry, ma'am. Adaptation is defined as the process and outcome whereby thinking and feeling as individuals and groups use conscious awareness and choice to create human environmental integration. So it was mentioned that it is uh, when you say health, it is being described as now uh, when the individual do not have an illness. Or if it is uh, illness, so something is uh, going on with the patient. No, so it is. Uh, we do not know. We do not know exactly what time or what place uh, an individual will experience some uh, diseases or disorders in the body. But uh, we have to to. Our purpose as a nurse is just to promote, you know, to make uh, every individual healthy as well, you now without any uh, illnesses, that the, each person will be able to adapt to the changing environment. Stressors will come, but the individual, according to, to Roy, Sister Roy, you know, individual has the adaptation level the different adaptation level adaptation level that will uh, counteract with the stressors that we have experienced so each one of us uh, follows uh, growth and development no but uh, we have different uh, what you call this one different uh, time now when we acquire that uh, particular uh, stage and uh, we have different in every stages that we are in we have also different coping mechanisms or different adaptations into the different stressors that we encounter okay so it is when you help it is classified as without illness no okay next we have Nursing, you read for us, Miss Kagap, uh, Mister Kagape. Nursing, nursing is the science and practice that expands adaptive abilities and enhances person and environment transformation. Roy's goal of nursing is is the promotion of adaptation in each of the four modes, thus contributing to health, quality of life, and dying with dignity. 
Nursing is about the increase, enhancement, modification, and alteration of the stimulus to achieve adaptation. Thank you. So they have different, uh, uh, each theory of different uh, interpretations of what is nursing. But if you look at thoroughly, it is more on uh, almost the same. No? Uh, by Sister Roy, it is mentioned that it is the science and practice. When you say science, because we know already what is the reason behind that particular procedure that we are doing. Everybody can change the linen. Everybody can do changing of bed linens. But we have the different way in the nursing profession to do it as well as we have also the reasons why we do it uh, in the other way. Now we have steps. We have the guidelines to follow so that it will also help us to protect ourselves. Remember, when you take care of the patient, uh, they are usually ill, but we have also to protect ourselves. So it is more of uh, the reasons behind is more of uh, science. No? It is science because there is an explanation why you perform the particular procedure. Why you turn the patient to the right? Why not on the left? Uh, if it is uh, why uh, if it is pregnant, why uh, it is encouraged on the left? Why not on the right? Because you will have to know what is the purpose. No? Uh, it is being explained by science. Okay, it is uh, also when you say uh, science. Of course, the way we do it is with. Uh, and the way we do the procedure or the way we, we care our patient is with tender loving care. We will not just turn immediately, but we have to do it with love. Kaya nga nandiyan ka sa San Pedro Calix. Love serves. Okay? So it enhances no, our abilities as well, the person and the environment transformation. So we have different uh, we have uh, rationales behind in its procedure, in what we are doing. No, we have the it is properly explained why it is done like that way. Why not do it this way? When everybody can do the changing of linen, no. But we are doing the other way because we have the principles that guided us, and it is more on science. Okay? The nursing is about an increase or enhancement, modification, and alteration of the stimulus to achieve adaptation. So we have some, uh, we have to find some remedy. No? If, if uh, one particular item is not available, we have to find some uh, alternatives. Now, nurses are very creative. No? So... Uh, we have to, to find some alternative that we would be able to adapt, that we would be able to come up with our goal. No? Alibaba, a patient is my fever and you wanted to lower it down, but you do not have the power, you do not have the, the, the basin to use as you do your sponge bath. But nurses are... Uh, can find some alternative or very resourceful to, to find some alternative to be able to adapt you know, sa situations that it is not available. So that is nursing according to Sister Roy. I, we have here the different adaptation model. The key concepts, the person is adapting in a stable interaction with the environment, either internal or external. So it was mentioned no, sa kanyang metaparadigm that environment composes of internal and external environment. So we have the different uh, adaptation level to the different uh, environment, uh, the situation within the environment. The environment serves as the source of a range of stimuli. So this is, uh, uh, it was mentioned that the environment uh, will create some, what you call this one? This is the one that will create some stressors no? to the patient itself. No? If, if the patient is having headache, 
and the environment is so noisy that will uh, create more or that will that will uh, trigger or that will enhance the uh, the headache of the patient so uh sabi nga, this is uh, caused by an environmental uh, stimuli no a person's major task is to maintain integrity and uh, integrity in face of the stimuli. When you say integrity, the degree of wholeness achieved by adaptation to changes in within the environment. No? So that you will be able to, to adapt with uh, what is one? With the uh, degree of adaptation of an individual to the changing environment no? is uh, Ano, according to Roy, we have different adaptations levels. So, my 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 iba iba tayong uh, level of adaptations. Then we have here the system. You read for us, Miss Abay. System is a set of part of connected to function as whole of some purpose, and that's the that's so by virtue of the inter interpretance of its part, Roy considered the recipient of care to be an open adaptive system. We have to interact with other systems in, in, in the environment, have boundaries that are flexible and open to permit interaction with other systems, employ an, a feedback of in Input through output and output. Input defined as stimuli, which can which can come from the environment or from within a person. Okay, the system, no, as uh, it was mentioned by by Sister Calista Roy, that the individual, the person, is uh, the one who receives our care, and it is an open, adaptive system. So, ibig sabihin, when you say system, these are parts connected to functions, not to function as a whole. So, our body composes of different systems when one is being affected, now, that is connected to each other. Now, meron silang uh, interconnections with each other. So, if if one is uh, affected by illness, no? Kasi nga, uh, sabi nga niya, we are an open adaptive system. If one is uh, affected, uh, it also affects the other system. No? So, meron siyang, meron siyang, what you call this one? Meron siyang uh, connections in uh, sa bawat system ng tao. Okay? Then, when you say uh, input, anybody who can share with us what is an input? Hmm? What do you mean by input? Anybody? Input. Ay, sa harap niyo, oh. Which can come from the environment or from within a person. No? So, it might be caused by, it is the result that is caused by the uh, internal or the external environment. No. Then we have different. Uh, what about uh, sorry? What about uh, output? Sayon lang ang output. Anybody who can say what is output? Hmm? What is output? When you say output, this is an observable results. No, an observable results due to. Uh, environmental factors or due to stressors what happens to the person if there is uh, a stressor no when you say throughput this is the uh, behavior itself no? the behavior of an individual when there is uh, what you call this one now uh, when there is a stressor okay then we have different types of stimuli as mentioned Are you read for us Mr. Mabakinistahan, wait lang. 
Hindi ko pa memorize lahat. Mr. Donaire. Ano pa yun, ma'am? Ang focal po. You read for us the types of the stimuli. Pala. Focal. The internal or external stimulus most immediately confronting the person. It attracts the most attention. Contextual. All other stimuli present in the situation that strengthens or contributes the effect of the focal stimulus. Residual. Those stimuli that can affect the focal stimulus but the effects are unclear. The three types of stimuli act together and influence the, the adaptation level, which is defined as the ability to respond positively in a situation. Okay. Focal, this is more on. Yeah. So how did, how did you understand about focal? More on the Mr. Donaire. Sige down. Um, what do you mean by focal? Uh, 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 as you read the definitions, what does it mean? A stimuli that confronts the person from um, uh, maybe something. Yes, Mr. Kagape. Hindi mo gets, ma'am. Yeah, try. Uh, ang na-understand ko pa sa focal, ma'am, kayo yun yung stimulus na center of attraction siya. Which, uh, so, like, parang priority siya, ma'am. Kayo siya ang mapansin talaga. Mm, hindi siya actually priority. Pero this is the one that will caught the attention no? of an individual. So, more on, ano siya? <coughs> individual <Sorry>. needs, ma'am? <coughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> this is more of the one that would catch the attention of the individual because it is uh, it is with the high regard. Sorry, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. COVID na. <laughs> na COVID na. Okay. So this is the one that that requires the uh, requires the most attention. Yeah, almost priority. No? Because it is one that attracts the uh, the in the attention of uh, everyone. Okay. When you say contextual, what does it mean? <clears throat> Anybody? Miss Borromeo? Contextual. Ayun na oh. Ano po ma'am yung nakita po in person ma'am na maka-stimulus po sa, per, sa pasyente po ma'am? Okay. If this is the one, halimbawa may fever ako, no? when you say about stimuli, may fever ako, and then what the one that catch your attention is my uh, color. Kasi hindi mo man alam na may fever ako unless you have to check the, with the thermometer. Right? Hindi mo man yan alam na may fever, ganun-ganun mo lang siya. Diba? But you, what catches your attention is the color of my face. Pulang pula ako, no? And then lumuluha yung mata ko. That is the focal. When you say contextual, no? Namumula ang mukha ko. No? If you look at my face, pulang-pulang mukha ko, na lumuluha yung mata ko. No? But when you check the temperature, there is a high temperature. So that is the context one. Nakuha. Yes po, ma'am. Okay. What about residual? What about residual? Okay, when you say residual, doon sa focal, this is more on the uh, what you have observed. No? Contextual, because you have noticed the person is having a 
redness or nag, nag flash ang kanyang face tapos nag uh, nag teary eyes no then you have to check when you check temperature there is high fever when you say residual you have noticed that there is a fever because uh, uh, perhaps meron siyang infection na hindi hindi siya masyadong uh, identified hindi identified what is the cause of the fever yung kumbaga hindi siya klaro bakit kaya ito may fever because usually when the patient is having fever and you look at the signs on the face physically you have noticed ha ah, ito may fever ito kahit hindi mo panahawakan hindi mo pa nagaganon ang kanya mga ng skin no pero nakita mo pulang-pulang mukha lumuluha no uh, usually kahit na itanong niyo sa sa mga lola at lola ninyo they will examine the person itself titingnan bakit may lagnat ito no titingnan ah may sipon ah may ubo kaya may lagnat so hindi siya ito yung bali residual kasi hindi siya clearly seen by an individual unless you have to examine nakuha Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. And we have the different adaptation level, as I have said. Depends on the individual's response. No? Kasi uh, sabi nga, we have different... Uh, you have to remember, as you take care of your patient, you have to remember that every individual is unique. Although you are genetically... Uh, carrying no? brothers and sisters genetically or carrying the genes of your parents or your uh, grandparents but there is no individual that is exactly alike even the twin no? Kaya we have also different adaptations different responses to the external as well as the internal environment hello Okay, throughput. Ah, na, andito na. Throughput makes use of a person's process and effectors. Actually, when you say throughput, this is, uh, ano yung, uh, tawag niyan? This is the, yung output is the behavior. Uh, the throughput is the process. Or the input, ano yung input? Hmm? Kalimot na na yan. Balhin lang na kong slide. Ano yun? Yes, Ms. Ramorosa. Yung input, ma'am, yung stimuli that can be from the external or in internal environment po ng person. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. That is the cause. No? While the, the throughput is the, yung, tawag niyan, yung process of how you respond to the stimuli. The output is the, tama ba ko? Uh, the output is the behavior of the individual. So we have here the two process, the, the process as well as the effectors. The throughput is the process. No? Uh, it refers to the control mechanism that the person uses as an adaptive system. So how does the person adapt to the uh, stressor? No? You cannot tell also, as I have said, you cannot tell that uh, every individual uh, now, you have to remember that every individual is unique. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, po, oh, itong pasyente na ito, yung isa doon, nag-anak, nag wala man lang, walang, maano ma lang, hindi siya maingay. Pero ito masyadong okay, kalakalakan na mga butil ng luha niya. Na? Pariyo lang naman silang dalawa. Oh. So, you cannot compare this one. Ha? Because we have also different process of how the person adapt to the situation. Okay. Ingay yung kapitbahay ko. <laughs> Na-distract ako. The effectors, this is referring to the physiologic function. The self-concept and the role function involves in adaptation. So if there is a stressor that occurs, no, uh, what are the Yung process is how you control, no? how, how you respond or you control yourself as you respond to the stimuli. 
Pero ito yung factors naman, just ko Lord, magkiklose ng mga windows din. <laughs> Sorry. Maingay ang kapitbahay ko, na-distract ako. Kabila. Okay. So, uh, when you say factors, this is the referring to the uh, what's the reason? The system of the body, no? Kung halimbawa, uh, katulad ng kanina na meron siyang fever, how does the person uh, respond to the fever? So, ang effect dun sa kanya, nag uh, redness, no? Yung face niya, nag yung mata. These are the effectors. Okay. Next, we have the output. Okay, uh, tama nga. The throughput is the process. The output is the behavior. Okay, so we have here adaptive responses, those that promote integrity in terms of the goals of the human system. And the ineffective responses do not contribute to the integrity in terms of the goals of the human system. So we have... Uh, when you are going to care your patient, you have to have your uh, quick uh, plan of action. No? So try to look at your goal if it is uh, attained as you take care of your patient. No? Because if you have attained your goal, that means your nursing intervention is effective. If you did not attain your goal, it, is me it means it is ineffective. Okay? So, yung response ng patient mo is ineffective as well as effect. Uh, ano yan? Yung, yung isa is effective. Uh, okay. Then, we have here the coping mechanisms and control processes. You read for us, Ms. Vicada. Ms. Vicada. Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, excuse me po. Super hina po ng internet ko, ma'am. Parang, hello, hello? Yes. You just read this one. Can you see the PPT? No. Wait lang, ma'am. Ha, pwede refresh ko po muna. Okay. Never mind. Okay, Miss Bidoy. You read for us, Miss Bidoy. Coping mechanism are the processes that a person uses for self-control. Uh, coping mechanism are innate or acquired ways of interacting with the changing environment. Innate coping mechanisms are gen gen genetically determined or common to the species and are genetically viewed as automatic process. Acquired coping mechanisms are developed through strategies such as learning. Okay, so this, uh, when you say coping mechanism, this is how you're going to control yourself as you respond to the stressor, no? So we have two types of coping. We have the innate. When you say innate, this is coming, or what you have inherited from your, from your parents or from your grandparents. This is through the transformation of genes from your parents to you, okay? both your either both your father or your mother but when you say acquired uh, in a in a coping mechanism because it is genetically uh, acquired no uh, there will be an uh, automatic response towards this stressor but when you say acquired coping mechanism uh, you have experience uh, this is through experiences now you learn it and uh when, if you experience that particular incident, itong stressor na ito, I have, I have uh, encountered this one previously. So you have already the learnings no, with that previous stressor. So by this time, if it also attacks you, you know already how to handle this particular stressor because you have learned already. You have acquired the coping mechanism that, uh, you have the strategy to cope up with that particular stressors already. You follow? Yes, Pop, ma'am. Okay, okay, thank na you. Okay, next, we have the categories of coping mechanism. Okay, you read for us, Ms. Bicada. Regulator subsystem. Major coping process involving the neural, 
chemical and endocrine system. Example, increase in vital signs, sympathetic response to stress. Cognitive subsystem is a major coping process involving four cognitive emotive channels, perceptual and information processing, learning, judgment, and emotion. Effects of prolonged hospitalization for a four-year-old child. Example, yeah. Okay, thank you. So when you say regulator, uh, it is because of uh, the different hormones that is being released by our body or chemicals released from our body, neural uh, substances released from our neurons no? during the, the, if there will be a stressor. No, so an increase it can cause an increase in vital signs. So if uh, another example for this is when there will be a sunog, okay, sigaw ng kapit bahay mo sunog, then automatically you carry the refrigerator, di ba? You can carry that one, but after the sunog you cannot return. You cannot carry already that item. It is because of the a hormones that is being released by the endocrine system. No, kaya kayang-kaya mo kahit ikaw lang mag-isa. Pero pagbalik mo, pag, pag tapos na, i-carry mo na, you cannot carry it already because the, the regulator is already uh, has subsided. No? So, hindi na nag-release ng hormone ang iyong endocrine. No? Kaya hindi siya nakapat, hindi mo na-carry ang iyong breath. Okay? These are the regulator subsystems. No? And this causes some uh, increase in vital signs because if you are if you are angry with a particular person, no? it causes it releases some chemicals in your body and it causes to increase some vital signs, parts of the vital signs. When you say vital signs, it includes the blood pressure, includes the temperature, includes the cardiac rate, includes the respiratory rate as well as the pulse rate. So, kung galit na galit ka, what happens to you? Diba? Tumataas yung... Ano? Anybody? Blood pressure, ma'am. Blood pressure. Yes, tumataas yung blood pressure. Pero hindi mo man makita yan unless you will check. Right? Another one. Yung, yung makikita talaga sa mukha ng pasyente o yung, yung ma-feel mo talaga if you are angry. Ano yung mangyari sa vital signs mo? What particular vital signs causes an increase if you are angry with somebody? Yes, Miss Mikada. Yung heart rate po. Yeah, pwede yung heart rate mo magpalpitate ka, no? Or, di ba, yung hininga mo. Oh, galit na galit ka. <laughs> Gumaganong ka. No? Ventilation po. Yes, magtaas yung iyong uh, respiratory rate. So these are through the sympathetic responses to the stressor. So that is caused by, that is what we call the regulator subsystem. When you say cognitor, no, uh, this is more of the emotions. So ang um, maganda example dito, there is an example that the effects of prolonged hospitalization for a four-year-old child. Now, if you notice in the hospitals, Nurses are not wearing already a white uniform when they are assigned in the pediatric ward, as well as in the nursery or in the NICU. No? They are asked by the administrators to wear colored uniforms. Kaya if you will notice, no, naka-white yan sila when they will go to the hospital, but the moment they arrive in the hospital, they have to change their dress. No, ang iba naka-white pants at the top, is colored pink, yellow, or some colorful, no? And it has some, uh, tawag niyan yung animations. No? Iba may mga, may mga throwing, throwing na, mga, ano ba, si Dora, ayan. So that will attract, no? That will help to alleviate the fear of the student, of the, I mean, the, the patient itself, no? So, Ito yung, yung tao niyan, this is uh, affecting the cognitor subsystem. No? So more on the emotions. Okay? Then we have here, I'm just showing you how does the regulator subsystem uh, affects the 
individual responses. No? So if there will be internal, external stimuli or the stressor no, that attracts or that, uh, that attacks an individual, it causes neural, chemical, endocrine, as well as uh, channels no, of uh, hormones will be released. And once it is released, there will be an automatic consciousness, automatic and consciousness response of the individual. So yung sabi ko sa iyo kanina, sa inyo, mga no? may sunog, automatic na kaya niya yung re. No? Then we have the cognitor, internal, external stimuli, causes a perceptual uh, information processing, learning, judgmental, and that would make an individual response to the stressor, respond to the stressor. Okay? So we have here another term, control process, stabilizer and subsystem, and innovator subsystem. When you see stabilizer, this is, uh, ito yung mag magpa, magpa, tawag yan. Ano pong other term for stabilize? Magpahupa or magpa, uh, uh, making the patient uh, calm down, no? yung sub-stabilizer. These are also uh, caused by other hormones as well. No? Well, innovator, this is uh, concerned with the creativity or change as well as growth. Because as we grow, no, we have different uh, yung learnings that uh, we have learned through our experience or through formal uh, education. So that makes the individual uh, change, no, change style. So and we know already uh, how how to to. Ano yan, to, to respond to the uh, stimuli. No? So kung magiging innovative tayo. No? Para, para hindi, hindi, it will not give some effect on the, on the vital signs. No? Uh, you can control already yourself. I calm down lang ako ngayon. Kasi matanda na ako, da, dalaga na ako, dapat hindi ako magpili-tili mag dyan. Kung nakita yung ng aking crush, pasimple lang tayo. Pero, ah, ang mata ko, may ikaw to sa aking class. Mga, mga ganyan, you know already how to, to, to control yourself. Okay? Then, we have different adaptation level. You read for us, Miss. Sino to ba? Hindi ko ka memorize. Miss Yumang. Adaptation level, integrated. Adaptation level at which the structures and functions of a life process are working as a whole to meet human needs. Example, stable processes of ventilation, the complex process of breathing that exchanges air between lungs and atmosphere. Okay, so it is integrated. No? Uh, it is sabihin, there is this uh, one, one structure also with the one function also affects the other. Now, may, meron silang tawag niyan yung, yung interrelationship, kumbaga. Okay. So, stable process of ventilation, if there is an unstable ventilation, this is more on the lungs. Na? The lungs will be the one to, have you done with the, are you done with your anatomy sa respiratory system? Wala pa po, ma'am. Wala pa. Wala pa po, ma okay. So when you say ventilation, this is more on the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. No? It is more of the breathing process of an individual. So if there is uh, niyan, alteration doon sa function ng iyong uh, alveoli or iyong lungs, it is not only the lungs that is affected, but of course, other systems like the heart is also affected. Because of the, the, the circulatory system, no, yung ating exchange of gas and oxygen is also altered. Kaya meron siyang, nagkakaroon siya ng, ng tawag niya yung uh, affecting other systems of the body siya. Kasi uh, integrated kanilang functions no? with the lungs as well as with the heart. Okay? Then we have the 
Can you read for us, Mr. Hukum? Uh, adaptation level. Com uh, compensatory. Adaptation level at which the cognitor I and regulator have been activated by a challenge to the integrated life processes. Example, grieving and role transition. Okay. So when one member of the family uh, died, it is uh, the responsibility, especially if it is a father, the responsibility of the father is being trans, uh, transferred, no? or the, response, uh, the, the elder son will compensate for the loss of the father. No? So siya ang, ang, ang role instead of the father is being handed down to the eldest son. No, di ba ganun naman uh, in reality? No, ito yung ating situation. Pag mawala si mami, it is the eldest daughter that will take charge of the responsibilities. Naman. Pag mawala si daddy, it is the eldest son. But usually, if one member, if there is a grieving process that happens in the family, it is usually the eldest that will have the uh, to compensate no, with the role or the responsibilities of the lost individual. Okay, ito yung yung nangyayari sa atin. Okay, so mag nagkakaroon siya ng ng adjustment. No, mag-adapt siya. The eldest one will adapt into that particular stressor. No, kasi siya man ang eldest, so nagcompensate siya. Sa, sa lost father. Okay. Next, we have the compromise. You read for us, Mr. Ya. Compromise. Adaptation level resulting from inadequate, integrated, and compensatory life processes or adaptation problem. Examples, hypoxia and ventilatory impairment, unresolved loss, and abusive relationships. Thank you. So hypoxia is the loss of oxygen from the tissues. Okay? If there is a decreased oxygen supply to the tissues, it will not only affect the uh, lungs, but other systems is also affected. So compromise yung oxygenation level ng ating patient. Nakuha? Yes, and then. Thank you. If there is hypoxia, there is also ventilatory impairment. Kasi referring to oxygenation tayo. No? So if there is ventilatory impairment, no, respiratory system is affected, it might cause some loss of the individual. And uh, abusive relationships also can be a com compromise uh, adaptation level. No? Kasi yung, if, if uh, the person is abused, it has, uh, it causes trauma to the individual. And if there is trauma, it compromises the lahat. No? Pwede ang kanyang work, na compromise. Pwede ang kanyang relationship with the next, with other individual is also compromised because she was abused previously. Or uh, pwede compromise ang kanyang uh, relationship with the community itself. Okay. Next. You follow? Yes, ma'am. Mom. Thank you. Next, we have adaptive process. You read us, Mr. Kines. Um, adaptive modes uh, are categorized of behavior to adapt to stimuli and can be used to determine a person's adaptation level and can cause and can be used to identify adaptive or ineffective responses by observing a person's behavior in relation to the adaptive okay. okay so how the person will adapt the stressor no in categories of behavior no how does the person uh, respond to that particular stimuli now, these are what we call the adaptive modes of an individual. Then we have uh, four adaptive modes. You read for us, Ms. Uh, Alejado. Yes, 
number one, physiological, the way a person responds as a physical being to a stimuli from the environment. Goal, physiological integrity. Five physiologic needs. Ox oxygenation, nutrition, activity, and rest and protection. Four complex processes. Senses, fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base balance. Neurologic function, endocrine function. Thank you. So when you say physiologic need, if you remember, in your senior high, well, I think you have discussed already the Maslow's of needs. Have you heard that one? Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Have you heard? Mom. Okay. So when you say physiological, this is the basic need of an individual. No? Uh, referring to the adaptive modes, we have the oxygenation. Actually, if you look at the pyramid of uh, Maslow's uh, Abraham Maslow, it is the physiologic need that has a bigger, oh, uh, yeah, bigger the pyramid niya. Yan ang may bigger uh, space, no? Because that would be the priority, no? The physiologic is the priority of uh, need, no? Individual. So, yeah, our goal is to have physiologic integrity. So that part, uh, all of this will be achieved. Okay, next we have, okay, sorry. Next one, you read for us, Miss Bagio. Number two, self-concept, group identity mode, focuses specifically on the psychological and spiritual aspects of the human system. Self-concept, defined as the composite of beliefs and feelings about oneself at a given time, and is formed from internal perceptions of others' reaction. There are two components. First, physical self, body sensation and body image. Two, personal self, self-consistency, self-ideal, and moral, ethical, spiritual self. Self-concept. So, or, ano yan ha? Hindi yan uh, bar. O ano yan? A self-concept or, or slash group identity mode. Uh, excuse me, ha? Wait lang. Isa na ba ang aking
Sorry. Okay, to continue. This is self-concept. Self-concept or group identity. No? So this is referring to the individual self as well as to the community self. Or a group of uh, persons. No? Uh, it is either self-concept or group identity mode. Okay, this one focuses on the psychological and spiritual aspect. When you say psychological, maybe uh, sabihin? More on the emotions. No? More on the emotions and the spiritual aspects. No? So, spiritual aspects involves uh, the belief of our patient, no? the, the culture that they have also. So, we have to... Uh, respect all of this, no? And uh, it is either, when you say self-concept, it is either physical or uh, personal. It has two components, physical or personal, no? Physical is the body sensation, while uh, personal is self-ideas, or it is more of the ethical concerns of the individual, okay? Then we have the uh, this is the group identity. Yung sabi ko kanina, it is either self-concept or group identity. So the group identity, this is more on, uh, it is in a community or a uh, group of individuals. Na? So what is uh, the goal is the psychological integrity. Okay? Because this is more of uh, yung individual or group uh, concept as well. Okay. Then we have the role function mode. You read for us, Miss uh, Mr. Takel. Number three, role function mode. A role is a set of expectations about how a person occup occupying one's position behaves towards a person occupying another position. The goal is social integrity. Roles are carried out with both instrumental behaviors, the, act, the actual physical performance of a behavior, and expressive behaviors, which are the feelings, attitudes, likes, or dislikes that a person has about their role or about the performance of a role. Okay, thank you. The role function mode, this is referring actually to, to the primary, secondary, and the tertiary role. So we have... Uh, how how the person uh, behaves or how the person uh, interact with the other person occupying another position. So halimbawa, uh, ikaw, yeah, if you're uh, the, the health team, uh, in the, uh, it, the nurse is one of the member of the health team in the hospital. And the janitor also is one of the member of the health team because they are the one that maintain the environment for the benefit of our client, of our patient. So how will you deal, no? how will you deal occupying the nurse position? How will you deal with the person occupying the janitorial position? So this is more of role function. No? So roles are carried out in both instrumental behavior as well as expressive behavior. So how will you deal? No? Hindi pwedeng sigaw-sigawan yan. Hindi pwedeng, ha? Ah, ako na lang. Kasi, hindi man alam na mga janitor yan. But you have to tell them, no? Because that is, if you notice in the hospital, nurses are, are always uh, at least when there will be problems in the hospital. Kung walang gamot, sinong pagalitan ng watcher? It is a nurse. Kung basta ng ilaw, sinong tatawagin ng, ng watcher? Nurse. So this is more on how, uh, what is your role no? as uh, a nurse occupying that position, also interacting with another person with the different uh, position. It is higher than you or it is lower than you. Okay. Next, we have the 
Uh, as I have mentioned, it has uh, different uh, roles now, my primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay, you read for us, Mr. Uh, Labastido. Sexy and sex. Okay, so these are the different uh, roles of an individual. Now, when you say uh, role function mode, now we have the primary, uh, the age bracket, you have to consider the sex also. That is why uh, in the hospital, even if you wanted to perform the particular procedure, if the patient doesn't want also to be performed by you because you're a male, especially in the delivery room, they will ask a female, actually. So we will not insist on what we want, but we have also to respect our patient. You know? So because uh, the primary uh, primary role of the nurse also is uh, determined in this uh, bracket. You know? If you will try to look at the age of the patient, the sex of the patient, and the growth, developmental stage, is it uh, following the development stage or is it, if it is uh, delayed, no? Katulad na ating mga Down syndrome, no? We cannot give uh, some uh, activities. It is not suited for them. So you, we have to check all of these uh, areas. Secondary, what is your role, no? Sample for details, husband and wife. Because uh, both of you, no? As a couple, you have your responsibilities. But uh, it is also, uh, as I have, uh, it was mentioned, it is also associated with the developmental states, plus the primary role. Because when you are a couple, you have also a responsibility as a couple, and you have also a responsibility as an individual. Okay? Tertiary, this is more of a combination. No? secondary uh, and the tertiary okay next we have the interdependence mode ito yung pang-apat na adaptive modes as mentioned by Roy who you read for us miss pagaran The inter interdependence mode focuses on close relationships which results to giving and receiving of love, respect, value, nurturing, knowledge, skills, commitments, material possessions, time, and talents. Of course, between the person and the most significant other or between the person and the support system. Example, goal, affectional, adequacy. Okay, when you say interdependence, this is referring to the coping mechanism. Uh, the coping mechanism uh, arising from uh, a relationship, no, that uh, a close relationship that would result in giving as well as receiving love, respect, and all of this that is being mentioned, and uh, it is also uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, of course between a person and the most significant other. The most important thing. So, support system includes other members of the family. That is, the goal is affectionate advocacy. This is our goal here, no? Because this will, uh, this will uh, help to to evaluate if, uh, with the close relationship. You have given you have given uh, the the love that is being required 
the and you have received love also from your uh, from others or from significant others no or from your partner whatever okay so this is referring to uh, how how uh, or referring to the the, the mechanism that is arising from a close relationship okay Next, we have here the goal of nursing by RAM. RAM is Roy adaptation model to promote adaptation in each of the four adaptive modes. No? So, yun ang adaptive modes, yung physiologic, you know, prone as well as functional, uh, interdependence. Then we have the points to remember with the, the theory of uh, Roy. No? Adaptive or ineffective responses results from the mood coping mechanism. So how you cope up with a stressor, it is uh, adaptive or if it is ineffective. Adaptive responses supports the integrity of the person and the goals of adaptation, which our goal is, in which you mentioned the goal previously, as to promote, uh, promote adaptation and needs of the four adaptive modes. Ineffective responses neither promote integrity nor contribute to the goals of adaptation. So, you know, we have here another topic, the nursing process. To read for us, Ms. Remorosa. A problem-solving approach for gathering data, identifying the capacities and needs of the human adaptive system, selecting and implementing approaches for nursing care, and evaluation of the outcome of care provided. Okay, so nursing process, as we just mentioned, is a problem-solving approach. So this is your plan of care. Now, you will have your nursing process as soon as you have your RLE. Now, RLE starts next semester. That would be uh, FONDA. But next semester, you will have your RLE, but it is still in a classroom setting. By second year, hopefully, you will be exposed in the world already. So that is already RLE of the related learning experiences. So you will have your duty in the world already by second year. So must start on duty from the first year, second semester, but it is still in a classroom setting. Because in a classroom setting, during that RLE, you will be up with the different procedures no? that you will be using as you go on with your duty in the world. Now, Nursing process is one of the requirements of each concept that you will have. In one semester, you will have four concepts. So you have uh, one month per concept. Yeah? But uh, sometimes, especially this time that we are in a virtual class, uh, sad to say, uh, supposed to be mag one month ang ating uh, per concept, it was sad to say, uh, so virtual, we only have sometimes 8 days, 11 days, GT. Yeah? Because it is affected by different uh, activities also. Yeah? Next week, meron na naman tayong mental health. So, affected by our and in a second year, it's a third year and fourth year. So, this nursing process will be your, parang, if you, if you have uh, ano this one? Para ito, yung, para ito yung baril mo as you go on with your GT. This is your nursing plan as you go on with your GT. No? Yeah, uh, this is asked by your CI and every concept. Each one of you will make a nursing process individual. And at the end of the rotation, you will have your defense. Defense. Na parang, parang kumbaga, uh, parang thesis, yung parang research, actually. Pero ang, ang research na ito um, is more on the actual, in the actual setting. Yeah? So, this is your plan of action or a problem-solving approach 
to help the patient promote with uh, promote his health. No, if not to maintain, we have to promote the health of our client. So, hindi ang ating goal. Uh, our uh, thing goal is to discharge the patient uh, coping already with the disease. Hindi yung discharge ang patient na naka palit na siya ng white blue Okay, so this is why this is uh, and you will use this one no, from second year until fourth year. And even after, if you are already a registered nurse, but only you are not putting it into writing. If you are a student, you are asked by your CI to put that one into writing. Okay? Kaya, ito yung, yung, tawag nito, yung baril mo, habang mag-duty ka. Okay. Now, we have here the six steps in the same process. You read for us, Ms. Chen. Um, number one, assessment of behavior. Data gathering about the behavior of the person as an adaptive system in each of the adaptive modes. So examples are observable behaviors, which is the vital signs, non-observable behavior, uh, which is the feelings experienced by the person or, for example, anxiety. Okay, thank you. So assessment of the behavior, this, is, this involves gathering of the data. Uh, gathering of data about the behavior of the person as an adaptive uh, system in each of the adaptive modes. So we have here the observable behavior and the non-observable behavior. Example of observable is the vital signs. It is an observable because you will uh, take the vital signs, you will, you will count, no? you will read, okay? you will read the blood pressure, you will count the respiratory rate, you will count the cardiac rate, you will check the temperature as well. Okay, so the results that is being uh, reflected, or that is being, uh, the results that you have taken, is part of your observable behavior. Whereas if it is non observable behavior, these are the feelings that is experienced by your patient. Okay, so therefore, the non-observable behavior are the verbalization of the patient. Example of anxiety. Okay, ano bang observable behavior if, if the person is having an anxiety? Anybody from the class? Ms. Lacresta, give me one. Um, parang natutuliro, ma'am. What is it in English? Um... Like, <laughs> Mom, I forgot the English word. Sige, research mo. Okay, okay what about the copy? Hyperventilation, po, ma'am. Hyperventilation can be, okay. Another one, Miss. Ito. Miss da Mr. Dakel. Sleeping, ma'am. Usually sleeps. This one sleeps. Sleeps in the night, sleeps on the day. Both, ma'am. Oh. Kasi when you sleep in the night, that is the usual pattern. Okay, Miss Samantha. Ano po, ma'am? Difficult in concentrating po. Yeah, difficult in concentrating. Miss Wong. Restlessness po, ma'am. Restlessness. Miss Bicada. Not eating, like, konti lang ginakain. Okay, so, no appetite. Okay, Miss Modesto. May pagka-perfectionist po, ma'am. Perfectionist. Uh -huh. Then, so, malino. Sweating po, ma'am. Or restless. Ano Ay, Sweating po, ma'am. Sweating, okay. Wow, very good. Huh? Everybody's trying. So now, when you say that it is an anxiety, usually, no, you have to remember the patient is in the is in bed. Huh? Naka higa. Or naka upo ba. But when you say the person is having an anxiety, usually if the patient is in bed, unable to sleep siya, and then restless, turning every now and then. 
hindi siya mapakali. Oh. Turning every now and then siya. Kaya ikaw, if you're the nurse, na you have observed, ay hey, ma'am, ano po bang problema natin? Bakit kanina? Ngayon nakita kita, nakapaghilip ka sa right. Five minutes after, nasa left. After three minutes, nasa right. After five minutes, nasa left. No? So you have to further assess your patient. Meron ba tayong gustong sabihin? Meron ba kayong gustong ipagawa sa akin? O sasabihin sa akin? So you have to dig deeper what is the cause of the anxiety. So when you say observable behaviors, anxiety, anong nakikita mo? Uh, sorry, th those are the, the observable behaviors. No restless. What about non-observable behavior? So this is what the patient is telling you. Sabi, sabi mo, ma'am, bakit ano? Bakit uh, ikot ka ng ikot? Meron ka bang problema? Meron ka bang gusto sabihin sa akin? Ano bang pakiramdam? Gusto bang pakiramdam mo ngayon? Sabi, hindi ako nakatulog ng mga ayos talaga. Bakit, ma'am? You have to have a follow-up. Kasi pag sinabi niya, hindi ako nakatulog kagabi. Hmm. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-stop lang hanggang doon. No? When you do an assessment. Kasi, lahat naman tayo, no? sometimes, meron tayo incident na hindi tayo makatulog sa gabi. But you have to ask for that. May, may, may uh, follow-up question ka kung sa patient. Then you try to ask. How many hours are you going to sleep in the night? The usual pattern. So sabihin niya, Eight hours. Uh, sabi niya, halimbawa, eight hours ako. My usual pattern to sleep in the night is eight hours. Then you have also to follow up with another question. So, since you are admitted in the hospital, how many hours did you sleep in the night? Sabi niya, eight hours. So, ano yung ibig sabihin doon? Walang changes. Right? Sa patient. Pag sinabi niya, two hours lang ako nakapulog sa hospital. Then you have to have a follow up question pa rin. So, bakit two hours lang? No? What did you feel? What did you... Uh, is there anything that bothers you? That is why you cannot sleep? You only sleep for two hours in the hospital? When you are in the hospital, you are resting and ready. Sabi mo, ay, kasi pagkaraba ko, may mumo dito. No. So, may mga follow-up questions na. To dig deeper the uh, behavior that is being shown by your patient. We will not just rely on one question. Huh? When you do an assessment, uh, you have to assess further. So, mag examine ka sa patient mo, you have to examine from head to toe. Ano nangyayari sa buhok? Yung kulay ng buhok, black. Okay. Ano, ano ang buhok niya? Ang, ano ba? Is it fine or is it coarse? Okay. Baka merong buhok. Baka merong lice. Yung kanyang so, ganyan ang assessment of behavior. You have to gather data, but data that are relevant. You follow? Yes, but ma'am. Yes, Hindi lang tayo mag-gather ng data nga, ay, si Juan, halabiya siya, no? Plus, wait ka na siya. Habit na siya. That is not the data that you're going to gather. No? You gather data that is relevant to the behavior that is being manifested by your patient. Okay? So, this data will be the one to support later your nursing diagnosis. Okay? Kaya, relevant data ang kailangan. Now, there are cases, now, aside from anxiety, like, example, pain. You cannot see the pain, right? Unless the patient could tell you, I am in pain. Tama? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, when the patient is telling you that she is in pain, I am, I miss, my nurse, nurse, masakit ang ulo ko. So you have to evaluate if the patient is telling you the truth. How to evaluate? Look at the patient itself. Pag sinabi niya na may pain siya, Ano yung tura niya? Huh? Saan ba ang kamay niya? Huh? Kasi when you are in pain, usually your head is guarding your head. Diba? Hindi ko masabihin, ay masakit ang ulo ko. Nandito yung kamay niya. Normally, when you say the, you have your headache, masakit ang ulo. Diba ganun ang kamay mo? Tama? Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
So you have to try to examine the patient, try to look at the, the gestures as well. You know? But when you say non-observable behavior regarding pain, you know, what the patient is telling you is the non-observable behavior. So quote unquote, nurse masakit ang chan ko. Okay, that will be supported by the observable behavior like grinding the head no, or na grimace face or ayan, ha? So these are the the observable behaviors. So dapat meron kang kang tawag niyan yung sa assessment of your behavior dapat madami yung data mo na mag-support sa particular problem mo. The follow? Okay, when you say in pain a patient is in pain, nahawak siya sa ulo niya, masakit ang ulo, oh, ganun siya. No? And then some are uh, theory eyes, so ready. So pwede mong gawin yung observable behavior. Then you can include your vital signs kasi if there will be pain, there will be alterations in the vital signs. Kung in pain ng patient, tumataas ang blood pressure. Kung in pain ng patient, tumataas din yung vital rate. Ayan, di ba? So, meron talaga yung alterations in diagnosis. These are observable behaviors. But why you say na non-observable, these are already the feelings that is experienced by the patient. And you cannot feel this one. But you can assess further. You know? So, open quote po yung sinabi ng patient. Miss, you know, kung nag ko siya, ay, Ari, hindi sakit din ulo ko. Kung ganun yung pagkasulat ko, Ari, hindi sakit din ulo ko. Ano nung pagkasulat ko? Kasi yun ang verbalization ng patient. No? Pag sinabi niya, nag-arabic siya, nag-arabic, so sakit. Pag sinabi, ano bang arabic, arabic siya? Nag-arabic siya, arabic din ang sulat ko, quote and quote. These are observable behaviors. I mean, non-observable behaviors. Kasi ito yung feelings na sinabi ng patient sa iyo. Okay? Hello? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma so, yes, next, we have the assessment of the stimulus. Can you read for us, Ms. Gantuanko? Number two, assessment of stimuli. A stimulus is defined as any change in the internal and external environment that induces a response in the adaptive system. It is classified as focal, contextual, or residual. In this level of assessment, the nurse analyzes the subjective and objective behaviors and look more deeply for possible causes of a particular set of behaviors. Okay. So, as I have said, no, yung non-observable behavior, uh, sample kanina, uh, those assessment of the behavior, we have observable and non-observable. When you say observable behavior, these are the objective behaviors. Uh, objective behaviors, yes. These are the objective behaviors that you have observed, you have gathered from your patient. Okay? When you say subjective, this is the non-observable behavior, quote and quote. Claro? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when you take, uh, when you do an assessment of the stimuli, you have to cluster this one. Actually, uh, cluster mo. Now we have uh, following the, using the nursing process, or when doing the nursing process, you are also using NANDA as your reference. So, that the clinical instructor will give you a copy of this during your RNA. Uh, or you can do uh, some research. Actually, we have also books of uh, nursing process that will help to guide you in making your nursing process. Good for you, because it's available na ito ngayon. But uh, previous, uh, so, so time namin wala kami uh, when the nursing process is based on anatomy and physiology. Wala kami nanda po. But this time, we have the nanda po and you can refer to your nursing process, in the, um, especially with the assessment of uh, the next part, especially with the nursing diagnosis. Okay, 
Do you read for us, Miss uh, Ang? Nursing diagnosis. Formulation of state. Formulation of statements that interprets data about adaptation and status of the person, including the behavior and the most relevant stimuli. Therefore, is the goal setting establishment of clear statements of the behavior of outcomes for nursing care, which is realistic and attainable. This is done together with the planning. Okay, so when use, uh, when doing the nursing diagnosis, this is the this is an expert judgment of the nurse, no? Or um, judgment of the nurse on the data that you have collected, no? Uh, regarding the health of the patient. No? Kung ano yung mga needs ng patient mo. Or, tawag niyan, ito ba yung, tawag niyan, uh, particular, yung term ito, uh, a statement. No? It is a statement that will identify the behavior of the client as you have gathered that would lead to the uh, to the formulation of your nursing diagnosis. Okay? Example. When the patient is admitted in the delivery room because the patient is having already labor. Nagkakaroon na siya ng uh, contractions sa kanyang abdomen. So, pwede kang magawa ng nursing diagnosis. Um, alteration in comfort related to uh, nursing, uh, related to birthing process. So this nursing diagnosis can be seen in the NANDA. Uh, NANDA okay. So referring to pain, the problem natin kanina, yung assessment of behavior natin is more on pain. So formulation of the nursing diagnosis, example, is um, Pain related to, ang sabi ko sa iyong pain. Halimbawa, ang cause pain niya is, uh, meron siyang, meron siyang suga. No? Okay. So, or, ang pain niya is caused by, kasi after nanganak, meron siyang iwa doon sa perineum. So, experience ng patient ang pain. So, pwede yung mag-nursing diagnosis na, uh, labor pain related to birthing process. Okay. But when you make your nursing diagnosis, it has to be uh, rationalized why you come up with that particular nursing process, a nursing diagnosis. So, naka-base ka sa nursing, as a nanda na libro, with your nursing diagnosis, basing on assessment of the behavior that is manifested by your patient you now formulate the nursing diagnosis but then you have to rationalize why you come up with that particular nursing diagnosis so meron ka ding ha, explanation bucket labor pain related to birthing process and nursing diagnosis so, meron ka dyan rational, and then you have to specify also the uh, bibliography. Kung saan mo kinuha yung explanation with your nursing diagnosis. Okay? Ni follow? Yes, but ma'am. Okay, next one, we have the goal setting. Uh, correct your notes. Adding your notes, please. This is not already goal setting this time, but actually it is just the same. We change lang ang word. Um, it is already the patient outcome. Goal setting yan siya dati. But it is changed already. Pwede mo lagyan dyan. Goal setting slash patient outcome. Okay. So this is a clear statement of the behavior outcome for the nursing care that you have needed. So it is based on SMART. How to formulate your goal? It should be based on SMART. S-M-A-R-T. 
T. So what do you mean by smart? Anybody from the class? Yes, Mr. Somalino. Mom, smart refers to specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. Po. Okay. So what do you formulate a goal? Thank you. When you formulate your patient outcome, it should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be attainable, it should, it should be realistic and time bounded. Okay? So, ngayon, when you, example, those ating pain na problem, no, ating nursing diagnosis, labor pain related to birthing process. So, goal setting is within my eight, um, no, Within 30 minutes of uh, nursing intervention, patient will uh, tolerate pain. No, tolerate pain at a minimum, at a maximum level. So, naka, nakalagay doon na yun ang gusto mo mangyari sa patient. Dapat, kasi that is a normal process of pregnancy. Ang natin na share the patient to so, gusto mo lang mangyari kasi hindi natin matanggal ang pain during labor. But what is your goal is just to minimize or to, to lessen the pain or to make the patient be able to tolerate to the pain. So, yun lang ang goal mo. Okay? So, it has to have, you have to have one goal no? na realistic siya and time-bounded because I have mentioned within 30 minutes. Okay? When you talk about pain, it should be the priority of your nursing care. Because pain, we cannot tolerate the patient to suffer for pain for eight hours. When you are having your eight hours duty. Diba? Ito kaya, eight hours. Intayin natin eight hours, mawala yung pain. Pwede ba yun? So, hindi. No? When you talk about pain, dapat shorten. Iyong, short lang ang iyong... Uh, Short term lang ang goal of care mo. Huh? So kanina, another pain, uh, when there is uh, sugat, no? yung may busy ang kanyang perineum. So, yun naman, uh, iba din yung goal mo. But within my uh, 30 minutes to 1 hour duty, patient will be relieved from pain. Tanggal totally ang pain niya. Okay? So, kanina sa labor pain, matolerate. Kasi hindi natin yung mawala eh. That is the normal process of pregnancy. Nandiyan talaga yan siya. Habang on labor ang patient. Pero when you talk about pain na because of cut in the skin, because of the open wound, you can eliminate that one within 30 minutes. You follow? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, after the goal setting, after goal setting, you have to have your intervention. When you say intervention, this is the nursing actions. involves the determination how best to assist a person in obtaining established goal. So, your intervention mo is based on your goal. Ano kung gusto mo mangyari sa pasyente mo? Matanggal yung pain niya. So, anong gagawin mo para matanggal ang pain? That is your intervention. And we are telling this is nursing intervention. So forget about medication. Nakuha? You can write your nursing intervention about medication as the last, depending on the case of the patient. If it is fever, no, hindi kagad tayo magbigyan ng paracetamol. You have to have your nursing intervention before paracetamol will be given. Hindi kagad ba number one yung iyong paracetamol. But when you talk about pain because of the cut in the skin, like cesarean section, no, we cannot wait the patient to suffer for an hour, for two hours, or for eight hours more. No? So you can give as your priority the medication, the number one no, that is being ordered. Pero nakalagay talaga doon as ordered by the doctor. Because it is not our primary concern. Remember, you are a nurse. You are not a doctor. You follow? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
Kaya the intervention should be the nursing actions. No? These are, uh, this will focus on the manner in which the goal are being attained. No? And as I have said, nursing intervention is any action that is taken by a professional nurse that he or she believes will promote the adaptive behavior of the client. Okay, so example, uh, fever. Okay, now your patient is having a fever. Your a behavior that is uh, assessed behavior that you have, uh, the data that you have gathered, uh, meron siyang theory eyes, meron siyang flashes, uh, flashing of the face, meron siyang a warm skin to touch, no? and then uh, patient is weak, and then uh, uh, when you check the temperature, temperature is 38.9. Okay, so these are the behaviors that you have gathered. Now you have to formulate a goal, a nursing diagnosis mo. Alteration in or alteration in a thermoregulatory system related to yeah, yan. No, uh, nursing diagnosis is based on nanda, walang problema, hindi na problema. But you have to, to check uh, if it is appropriate for the data that you have gathered. Okay, your goal, okay, your goal is short term. Within my eight hours or within my within my shift, no patient's temperature will be lowered down to thirty-seven point eight. Kasi thirty-eight point nine, di ba? So ang gusto mo ma lowered into thirty-eight point nine CPR, then thirty-seven point nine. Okay. So nursing interventions. Give me one, Miss Ang. gawin mo kung ang patient mo may fever? Um, yung ano po, ma'am? Yung, yung water bath po. Yung ano yun? uh, well po. If may fever po ang patient, ma'am? Oo. Yung sa, ano po, lagyan po ng parang towel yung sa forehead niya. Okay. Yung sa umang tong towel, ibutang lang sa forehead? And then, check din po ang temperature, like, evaluate. So, doon muna sa towel. Anong gawin ko sa towel? Lagay lang sa forehead? Yes po. Maglagay din sa forehead, tapos, pwede rin po siya i- uh, Isa lang, isa lang. I'm asking only one. Ah, uh, yes. Lagay lang ang towel sa forehead. Opo. Okay. Okay, Mr. Gagape, what is your nursing intervention? PSB, ma'am. Rapid sponge PSB. Ma okay. Rapid sponge ma'am. Ms. Bicada. Fluids po. Uh, anong gawin ko sa fluids? Like water po, like mag um, water therapy pa kami okay. yan po. Water therapy water. or increase fluid intake. intake. Opo, yan. Ano pa? Sino pa? Miss Borromeo. Uh, Miss Modesto. Sige, Modesto muna. Bigyan ng gamot, ma'am. <gasps> You're a nurse. I'm telling you ahead of time. Nurse intervention man ang pinag-usapan natin. Okay, Miss Borromeo, what is your intervention? Get temperature, ma'am. Get the temperature? You have checked already. This is already part of your assessment behavior. Kaya mo nalaman na may fever. Pero ano ang gawin mo, Miss Samantha? Ano ma, mag-advise na to dress like clothing lang po. Not to dress? To dress po, light clothing. Okay. Advice for a light clothing. Yes. Next, Miss... Uh, Nasaan na ba si Bilian Weva? Uh, yes, ma'am. Provide, provide comfort po. Which type of comfort? Um, so in terms of temperature, po, like ventilation, if okay. like init ba masyado or if malamig ba masyado, ganun po. Okay. Temperature nga, mataas mainit siya ang katawan niya. So ano nga yun ang, ang temperature na ibigay mo? <laughs> ano lang po, room temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so masa na yun? 
Now, when you say intervention, I have mentioned it should be your nursing actions. I have mentioned forget about medication, but when you say if it is temperature, it should be last. Huh? Hindi siya mauna, Miss, sino yun? Miss Ang ba yun? Ah, Miss Borromeo. Ito ba yun, Miss Borromeo? Yes, ma. Okay. So, when you say nursing intervention, hindi siya put kagad, no? We will not, uh, we will not recur into medications kagad. Because this is nursing actions. So, temperature can be lowered down with the nursing interventions. So, may gagawin ng nurse para magbaba ang temperature niya. Hindi tayo uh, pupunta kaagad sa medication. No? If you just rely on medication, ibig sabihin, the nurse is not using that. Hmm? The nurse is not finding a remedy to lower the temperature of the patient. So, that is part of your negligence. Hello? So, ang, bin ang binigay nila na nursing intervention number one is to increase food intake. Ayan, to do TSB. Then, to encourage light clothing. Adjust their condition. Isa pa? Uh, ano pa yung sabi ninyo? Oh, Pagpalagyan natin yung APA. So, these are your nursing interventions. But each nursing intervention should be uh, supported with the rationale. What happens if you are going to give uh, PSB? What happens if you are going to increase the fluid intake of your patient? So, yun ang makikita sa rationale mo. Rational. Okay? May follow? So, your last intervention, Ms. Borromeo, no? after that, after you have done your nursing intervention, Part of your nursing intervention is to recheck. Recheck the temperature of the patient. But when you recheck, ang goal mo kasi is to lower the temperature at 37.9. No? From 38.9 to 37.9. But when you recheck, sad to say, the patient's temperature is only 38. Hindi siya naabot ang iyong goal. So ang nursing intervention mo is therefore ineffective. Nakuha. So now you can add Ms. Borromeo as part of your nursing intervention kasi ineffective yung nursing, pwede mo idagdag yung medication. Give paracetamol, one tablet, 500, uh, 500 mg, one tablet per ORM as ordered. So pwede siya, ilagay mo, pero nasa baba siya. Because medication is one of the dependent function of the nurse. And dito sa intervention, this is the nursing independent function. Nakuha. Hello? Yes po, ma'am. Okay. Opo, ma'am. Next, we will go to the evaluation. Evaluation is the judging the effectiveness of your nursing interventions in relation to the behavior that you have gathered after it was performed comparison with the goal, uh, compared with the goal established. No? So, the evaluation part is the most easiest part of the nursing process. Because, you know what? You will just look at your goal if you have attained or not. If you have attained, so lagay mo dun sa evaluation mo, goal met. Goal completely met. Pero dito sa fever, since kanina sabi ko, pag recheck mo sa temperature, the temperature is only 38. So, ang goal is to lower to 37.9. Tama? Hello? Yes, ma'am. So, ang evaluation mo dito, nakalagay, will be a goal partially met. Kasi bumaba nga siya into 38, pero ang goal mo kasi to 37. Kaya partially met ang iyong evaluation. Goal partially met, Temperature is, okay, after. After na ha, kasi yung goal mo is within. So, evaluation is the past tense of your goal. Okay? So, after 8 hours duty or after my shift, patient's temperature is 38 degrees centigrade. Kaya ka, nagkaroon ng partial na. Makita siya. Masupport siya. Bakit ka ang goal mo? 
that packet can come up with the evaluation of partially met, completely met, or unmet. It should be supported by your uh, evaluation based on your goal. Nakuha ba? Yes, bro. Okay. So then, so that is your thing process. Huh? You will do this one every concept. So sa isang semester, you have four concepts. So therefore, you have to make four, four nursing process. Every concept. This is part of the requirement in your RLE. And you cannot proceed to the next, next rotation if you did not make your nursing process and you did not defend your nursing process. Kasi defend mo yan siya sa yung clinical instructor. Okay, so Ram says, not all beautiful is always good, but all good is always beautiful. Agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. Strongly agree. There is always a room for improvement, and that is the biggest room in the house. So each one of you are expected to have changes, adaptive mode, different adaptation level to the stressors in the nursing course. Now, first year paman mo ron, dandahan mo na ang stressor. Pagdating ng second year, naku, ganito pala yung nursing sa San Pedro. Ha? May stressor sa RLE, may stressor sa lecture. Okay? But, there is always a room for improvement. Okay? So, that is for today. Oh my God, anong time na? Hindi ko nang habol si Kalista Roy. Okay, meron pa akong ilang minutes. Next, we go to the next topic. Kaya pa? Will I break, break si ma'am, no? Hello? Kaya pa ba? Sagot. Kaya pa? Medyo, medyo ma'am. Di pa sure. Bilisan ko lang. Bilisan ko lang ito. Okay, we have here the next topic. Opinion. Bilisan lang natin. So it's a barrier that protects the inner core. Okay. Then we have the normal line of defense. Represents a stability state for the individual or the system. If it is maintained over time and serves as a standard to assess deviations from the client to soul wellness. Okay, to, to show you the picture, ito na. Para maintindihan nyo. Ayan. So this is the inner core of an individual which is protected by the line of resistance. Yung line of resistance, this is the immune system that, uh, yung sample doon na nag-increase ang immune system mo. That is why the stressor or the, the yung sample ko na microorganisms cannot penetrate into the line of resistance because um Mataas ang aking immune system. No. On the first hand, meron tayong flexible line of defense. This, uh, yung sample ko kanina is, your, is my skin. No. Ang skin is my uh, flexible line of resistance. Uh, ano, not the skin. Uh, the, the behavior that I will uh, project when the stressors will occur. No. Uh, kung meron akong sugat, no, yung sample ko kanina, kung may sugat ako sa skin, no, it is my normal line of defense that is already break down. No, but it cannot uh, still penetrate directly into the inner core because there is still this kind of resistance. Ito ang flexible line of defense is my behavior towards the stressor. Nakuha? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, the line of resistance is the one that protects the inner core of the individual. 
and this uh, this is activated when the environmental stressors invade already the normal line of defense. Okay. Okay. Kuha na. O yun. The stressors, these are the, in the tensions that is being produced by the external or the internal environment. Okay, it may be interpersonal, intrapersonal, interpersonal, no? and extrapersonal. So may mga samples dyan given. You just read your uh, PPT. Then we have the uh, reaction. Okay, the reaction is, uh, this is the outcome that being produced or the results produced no? by the, uh, to a certain uh, stressors or certain, uh, what's the this one? Uh, yung, yung reaction is your adaptation process towards the stressor. Kung ano yung, paano mo i-handle yung stress mo. Okay, then we have the degree of, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the degree of reaction and then we have the prevention. Prevention is, uh, we have different uh, preventions, no? primary, tertiary also, and the, the secondary. These are interventions or uh, your actions that are being uh, done to prevent the occurrence of the uh, stressor to penetrate into the inner core. <clears throat> Sorry. Used to attain balance between the, within the continuum of the health. Then we have the, uh, ito yung three levels of uh, <clears throat> prevention. Sorry. We have the primary prevention. When you say primary prevention, you are, you're already uh, giving some nursing actions before the occurrence of the, the problem. No? Example, may sugat ako sa, sa skin. To, to have the primary prevention, no? um, tawag nito? Yes, may sugat na ako sa skin, pero ang gusto mo na hindi ma-infect yung sugat. So yung primary prevention mo is to have a prophylaxis prophylaxis that will prevent the occurrence of the infection. So, yun ang primary prevention mo. Secondary prevention, if it is already occurring, no? uh, meron ng uh, infection, kumbaga, doon sa aking suga. No? So, ano yung nursing interventions na gagawin mo to prevent uh, further complications? Okay. So, meron na infection kasi uh, nakalimutan ko magbigay ng primary prevention. So, nagkakaroon siya ng secondary na nagkakaroon siya ng uh, infection. So, to prevent the secondary prevention, no, uh, further complications caused by infection, no, uh, I have to do some nursing actions like uh, uh, giving antibiotics. Uh, Mag-antibiotic na ako kasi mag-infection na siya. So, antibiotic na. That is your secondary prevention as ordered by the doctor. Now, when you say tertiary prevention, this is the prevention that refers to, ano, to intervention that of course after the system has been treated through the secondary. So, nagkakaroon na ng infection, nagkaroon na, meron ka ng intervention with the antibiotic to prevent further complications na hindi mag-spread ang microorganisms. So, when you talk about tertiary, ito yung, uh, this is a combination of the first and the second uh, prevention, the, the primary as well as the uh, secondary prevention. So, kasi nandyan na, na effect na, para hindi siya maglala, what I do as my intervention is to do daily dressing. Yun ang aking tertiary prevention. Okay? So, we have here the reconstitution. This is part of the, katong sa core of the individual. The reconstitution is the adjustment where, uh, from the degree of the reaction and it is a state of going back. You know? So, when there is already, uh, tawag na ito, nagkakaroon ng line of resistance, no? uh, 
hindi na penetrate yung internal uh, inner core or the central core itself so the person will go back to its normal state no uh, healing process doon sa kanyang uh, sugat will go back so that is the reconstruction okay okay question ang bilis ko no ang pangutana nakasabot ba hello Kasabot ba? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Kaya, okay. You study again. You read again para maintindihan ng malalim. Okay. Any question? Wala na? So, next week will be your mental health. Affected na naman tayo. No? So, I will not discuss uh, banner already. But you have to read that one because that is already included in the quizzes or in the uh, long exam. Okay? Question. Open up your camera. Everybody open cam. Okay, so let us pray now. Miss Nera. Next next meeting, no? Sorry, Miss Nera. Next meeting before you get in the Zoom, you have to take your break, huh? Okay, Murad, nakalimot ko sa break. And you have also to remind me. Mag-break na kung gigoto mo. Okay, but be sure to take your uh, merienda before you get into the Zoom. Okay. Miss Nera? Ay, Ms. Nera. Excuse me, ma'am. Ano po siya na, ma'am? Nagalag po device niya. Si Nera po. Okay, Miss Baguio. You lead a prayer. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of our Lord. Lord God, thank you for this another wonderful day. Thank you for um, the blessings that you have always been giving to us. May you please let us remember all of the things that we have tackled for today's class. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, bye everybody. Bye, bye mom. Mom. Bye, bye, mom. Thank you, bye, mom. Thank you. Bye, mom. Thank you. Bye, mom. Bye. Bye. Thank you, mom. Pag humanak ko po, pag mag-meeting ng klase. Yeah. Ma'am? Yes? Ngayon po namin malaman ang grades namin, ma'am. Ah, yes. When? After lunch na lang. Ah, Ay, hindi pa, pa Hindi pwede after lunch. Sorry. Wala magkaklase. Good. Saturday? Okay pa, ma'am. Saturday. Uh, teka, titignan ko schedule ko. May klase ako mamaya, hindi ako pwede. Saturday, bye. Before 9. Hindi, hindi before 9. 1 o'clock. Okay po. Okay, pag-inform na lang sa iba, ha? Ay, mag-meet mag, mag, mag po tayo ma'am, pag isabi mo na ang dates namin. Hindi. Pero okay. mag-open Zoom ako. Ah, ay, may, may class at kami, ma'am, sa Anafi. One to four. So, anatomy, ma'am. Oh. So, four o'clock na lang. Okay, sige po, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, sige. Bye.